But alas, my lord, what is blood? What is nobility? We are all reptiles, miserable, sinful creatures. This quote is from Horace Walpole's 1764 novel, The Castle of Otranto, considered the first work of Gothic literature. Horace Walpole was the first to characterize his novel as Gothic. By subtitling The Castle of Otranto as a Gothic story, Walpole did not intend to attribute any sophistication to his novel. In fact, the word Gothic was employed as a farce, since Walpole's intention was to pass his novel as an antique Italian text from 1529. The meaning of the word Gothic in the context was deriving from the Middle Ages. Despite the subtitle, The Castle of Otranto is considered the first work of Gothic fiction due to its establishment of Gothic tropes such as the supernatural, old castles, secret passages, paintings moving on their own, and doors closing by themselves. The latter part of the 18th century saw an explosion of Gothic literature. Anne Radcliffe's works were some of the most popular in the 1790s. Her novels such as The Romance of the Forest and The Mysteries of Udolpho were considered to be of a more feminine style, where rationality prevailed instead of supernatural horror. Early Gothic works often have medieval settings. Ancient castles perfectly contributed to the themes of entrapment and constraint in these stories. In fact, Gothic literature is associated with the Gothic revival architecture of the period. Gothic writers associated old medieval buildings with what they thought as a terrifying period, characterized by harsh laws and mysterious, torturous, and superstitious rituals. The medieval settings of extreme beauty in Gothic works reflect the genre's appreciation of extreme emotions and the sublime. The sublime is that which, quote, produces the strongest emotion which the mind is capable of feeling and is most often evoked by a foreboding, setting, and terror in Gothic literature. By placing their stories in these settings, the authors were implying that the story conformed to the almost barbaric laws of the past, thus heightening the possibility for horror and the apprehension of the reader. Such settings also give an impression of isolation or dissociation from the rest of the world, implying that the story was shrouded in darkness and mystery. In the mysteries of Udolpho, Emily St. Aubert faces both physical and psychological isolation after being imprisoned in Castle Udolpho by Signor Montoni. Radcliffe preferred suggesting horrific things instead of showing them explicitly. Anne Radcliffe did not write horror as she believed it, quote, freezes and nearly annihilates the senses of its readers because it shows atrocious things too explicitly. Her work contrasted the work of Matthew Lewis, known for the monk, which was known by the public for its perversion and sexual violence. The Gothic thus became synonymous with Anne Radcliffe and her works were imitated by others. Other works published during the Gothic craze of the 1790s included Clermont, Wyland, The Castle of Wolfenbach, and The Orphan of the Rhine. The Gothic continued into the 19th century as the genre went hand in hand with the new literary wave of Romanticism. Gothic elements made their way into Romantic poetry, for instance, Samuel Taylor Coleridge's poem Christabel, which contains gloomy scenery, a damsel in distress, and aspects of the supernatural. Perhaps the most well-known gothic novel to come out of the early 19th century is Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. It tells the tale of Victor Frankenstein, a scientist who gives life to a being of his own creation. The story follows the creature as he is rejected by Victor, his creator, as well as society. Frankenstein was the result of a ghost story competition between Mary Shelley, Percy Shelley, Lord Byron, and John William Polidori that took place during their stay at Lake Geneva in the summer of 1816. 
The year was known as the year without summer. Due to a volcanic eruption in Indonesia, the summer weather was unusually cold, and the stormy wet conditions swept across Europe and North America. John Polidori's 1819 book, The Vampire, has also been linked back to the ghost story competition. The Vampire is considered by critics as one of the most influential works of fiction ever written, as it began a craze for vampire fiction. It was also the first time a vampire in fiction was not a monster, but instead was a suave nobleman, a character inspired by Lord Byron. Lord Byron was also the inspiration for Claire Claremont's 1816 gothic novel Glenarvan. Claire had written the novel after Byron had abruptly broken off their tempestuous affair. Unknowingly, these works were the start of another trope often visible in gothic novels, the Byronic hero. In fact, Charles Maturin's 1820 novel Melmoth the Wanderer features a Byronic anti-hero who sells his soul to the devil in exchange for 150 extra years of his life. The excesses and melodrama in gothic novels made it a popular genre to be parodied. The most notable gothic parody is Jane Austen's novel, Northanger Abbey. Catherine Morland is the wide-eyed and naive protagonist of the novel, who sees herself as a heroine of a Radcliffian romance whilst she travels to Bath and stays at an abbey. In the mid-19th century, the gothic novel had fallen out of popularity, though characteristics of the genre influenced the literature of the period. However, gothic short stories continue to be popular in literary magazines, as well as Penny Dreadfuls. Penny Dreadfuls were cheap serial publications produced during the 19th century. The stories of Penny Dreadfuls were usually sensational, focusing on detectives, criminals, and the supernatural, and featured almost gothic characters such as Sweeney Todd and Varney the Vampire. The most influential gothic writer of short stories from the mid-19th century was the American writer Edgar Allan Poe, who wrote numerous short stories and poems reinterpreting gothic tropes. His stories had many of the standard qualities of the gothic, medieval settings, castles, and ancient houses, aristocratic corruption, and temptation. Poe used these to explore extreme psychological states in his writing. He was perhaps one of the first gothic writers who twisted the genre into true horror. Other standout gothic supernatural short stories from the mid-19th century were written by Elizabeth Gaskell. Gaskell is remembered for her most popular novel, North and South, yet her short stories, such as The Old Nurse's Tale, are some of the best supernatural gothic tales from the era. Mary Elizabeth Braddon, the famed author of Lady Audley's Secret, also wrote many chilling and mysterious gothic short stories, featuring female characters who are independent, often clashing with the restrictions imposed upon them by Victorian society. Other notable gothic short story writers of the century were Arthur Conan Doyle, famous for incorporating gothic elements in his detective stories as well as the American writer Nathaniel Hawthorne. Nathaniel Hawthorne was publishing stories at the same time as Edgar Allan Poe. Poe even wrote that, quote, Mr. Hawthorne's distinctive trait is invention, creation, imagination, originality, a trait which, in the literature of fiction, is positively worth all the rest. Hawthorne is known for his most famous novel, The Scarlet Letter, but his more obscure gothic tales have been overlooked. Hawthorne's tales often feature the exploration of guilt, sin, and obsession. One novel of the period to draw from the genre is Emily Bronte's 1847 Weathering Heights. The story is set in the gloomy Yorkshire moors and features ghostly apparitions and a Byronic hero, the violent Heathcliff. Heathcliff embodies all the qualities of the classic gothic Byronic hero. He has a violent temper, is seductive yet sinister, prideful, moody, and vengeful. 
Also, Charlotte Bronte's novels, Jane Eyre and Villette, both have old buildings that are seemingly haunted. Jane Eyre sees an apparition in Thornfield Hall, where she is a governess, and the protagonist of Villette, Lucy Snow, sees a ghostly nun in the old pensionate where she teaches. However, like in Anne Radcliffe's novels, all the apparitions have rational explanations. Charles Dickens read gothic novels as a teenager, and this probably contributed to the gloomy atmosphere and melodrama in his own works such as Oliver Twist, Bleak House, and Great Expectations. Dickens's most gothic character is Miss Havisham from Great Expectations, who is a bitter recluse who shuts herself away in her gloomy mansion. His most gothic work is his final novel, The Mystery of Edwin Drood, which he did not live to complete. The 1880s saw a revival of the gothic as a popular literary genre that fictionalized contemporary fears like moral degeneration and questioned Victorian society. Also, late Victorian society was haunted by the ideas outlined in Charles Darwin's 1859 On the Origin of the Species and The Descent of Man, 1871. For many, questions about the origins and nature of humankind had become matters for science rather than theology to address. In The Descent of Man, Darwin concludes that humans are descended from a hairy-tailed quadruped which had itself evolved from some amphibian-like creature and this again from some fish-like animal. This description of human evolution was a nightmarish concept for the everyday Victorians. Robert Louis Stevenson's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is a late Victorian novel that combines this animalistic notion with critiques of social classes of the time. In fact, there are descriptions of Dr. Jekyll's evil alter ego, Mr. Hyde, as ape-like and troglodytic. The violent and uncivilized Hyde is somehow a more primitive human, a more animalistic version of Dr. Jekyll. Hyde's descriptions coincide with his criminal nature, and Stevenson manages to vividly express that the criminal could lurk behind an acceptable public persona, and that appearances provide no real indication of the brutal personality within. In Ireland, writers like Joseph Sheridan Le Fanu and Bram Stoker form the core of the Irish Gothic subgenre with stories set in castles, with barren landscapes, and a myriad of aristocratic characters. Le Fanu's 1864 novel Uncle Silas makes use of the gloomy villain, foreboding mansion, and persecuted heroine tropes, and shows direct influence from the castle of Otranto and Mysteries of Udolpho. Le Fanu's short story collection, In a Glass Darkly, published in 1872, includes the standout vampire story Carmilla, which was one of the early works of Victorian vampire fiction. Carmilla influenced the classic 1897 vampire novel Dracula by Bram Stoker. Stoker not only created the most famous gothic villain ever, Count Dracula, but also established Transylvania and Eastern Europe as the epicenter of the Gothic. The novel, however, was influenced by the xenophobia anxieties of the period. Lucy Westenra is the vulnerable young woman in danger in the novel, who faces Count Dracula, Stoker's version of the obscene or satanic villain, one who breaks societal norms and laws. Victorian vampire fiction, as well as other gothic stories of the time, feature power struggles and plots are often driven by the exploration of questions of sexual desire, pleasure, power, and pain. One relatively unknown Victorian vampire novel is Florence Marriott's The Blood of the Vampire. The novel follows Harriet after she leaves a Jamaican convent for Europe and her ill-fated attempts to integrate with Victorian society. The vampire, Harriet Brandt, is also a psychic vampire, killing unintentionally. Other notable late Victorian Gothic works 
include Oscar Wilde's The Picture of Dorian Gray, Richard Marsh's The Beetle, Charlotte Perkin Gilman's The Yellow Wallpaper, and Henry James's The Turn of the Screw. The Yellow Wallpaper is perhaps the best example of the beginnings of the psychological thriller genre. The Yellow Wallpaper is considered to have gothic themes such as madness and powerlessness. It is a unique cross between psychological horror, a gothic tale of isolation, and a haunting ghost story. The story of The Turn of the Screw is also influenced by the effects of isolation. It tells of a governess who, caring for two children at a remote estate, becomes convinced that the grounds are haunted. Biographers have indicated that the American writer Henry James was familiar with spiritualism, a belief system that first appeared in the 1840s in upstate New York, and is the belief in the continuity of personality after death. By 1897, spiritualism was said to have more than 8 million followers in the United States and Europe, mostly drawn from the middle and upper classes. This is just one example of how the mood and themes of gothic novels held a particular fascination for the Victorians due to their obsession with mourning rituals, mementos, and mortality. Gothic tales and short stories continued into the first part of the 20th century. The most notable Gothic writers from the period are M.R. James, known for ghost stories such as The Mezzotint, W.W. Jacobs, also known for his short stories, especially his most famous, The Monkey's Paw, Algernon Blackwood, known for his 1907 novel, The Willows, and H.P. Lovecraft, whose tales utilized Gothic elements in a supernatural horror genre. Also in the earlier part of the 20th century, Edith Wharton, the famed American author of The Age of Innocence, had published multiple gothic stories, many with supernatural elements. When discussing the 20th century gothic, one cannot overlook Daphne du Maurier's 1938 novel, Rebecca which is believed to have been influenced by Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre. The novel tells of an unnamed narrator who, in Monte Carlo, working as a lady's maid, falls for the dashing widower Maxim de Winter. The two are quickly married and depart for Maxim's massive country estate, Manderley. There, the narrator must deal with her husband and the house being haunted by the memory of his late wife Rebecca. The Gothic in Rebecca relies mostly on the atmospheric ambiance that is created and the psychological horror the narrator faces. Other books by Du Maurier, such as My Cousin Rachel and Jamaica Inn, also display Gothic tendencies. A subgenre of fiction that emerged in the 20th century is the Southern Gothic. The genre was a result of heavy influence from Gothic elements and the American South. Common tropes of Southern Gothic include deeply flawed, disturbing, or eccentric characters, decayed or derelict settings, and situations or events relating to poverty, crime, or violence. In the 1960s and 1970s, the Gothic genre appeared in the form of paperback Gothic romances, most featuring melodramatic storylines and extravagantly illustrated covers of a young woman running away from a dark, spooky mansion. However, within this theatrical era of the Gothic, certain gems were indeed written, such as Mary Stewart's 1959 novel Nine Coaches Waiting and Victoria Holt's almost cult classic The Mistress of Melon. The most notable works from the latter part of the 20th century that feature Gothic elements are Shirley Jackson's We Have Always Lived in the Castle, Anne Rice's Interview with the Vampire, Susan Hill's The Woman in Black, and Toni Morrison's Beloved. Today, the Gothic can be spotted in countless literary works, ranging from mysteries to thrillers to horror. Multiple tropes such as an old isolated setting, the distressed protagonist, and mysterious, untrustworthy characters have their permanent place in literature. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and want to see more, be sure to like and subscribe.